All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. This growing season has been uh, insane, is really the only word I can think of. Uh, so far, not only are my garden plots, multiple plots that I have access to this year, all doing fantastic. Uh, the fruit trees in the backyard are doing fantastic that are not figs. Uh, they had a really nice start to the season. There was no late frost. Um, everything's going to fruit at a pretty heavy rate other than maybe the blueberries and honeyberries because of the drought last year. But the fig trees as well are doing incredible. Not just in this greenhouse is what we're going to look at today is the potted figs that have received a head start in here. They've been in this greenhouse environment for about a month, month and a half, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, and so it's now early May and it's a great time to evaluate which of these figs actually have fruits if we need to make any adjustments, which trees need a little bit of help. Maybe there's a tree that's unhealthy. Maybe there's a tree that needs a bit more water. Maybe we uh, need to feed a particular tree a little bit more. And also what's the most critical thing in this environment and really for any fig tree is the sunlight. Do we need to maximize that sunlight for each individual tree because it's just not setting those fruit buds? And we talked a lot about that in so many other videos when we talked about the form we talked about actually uh, training the fig trees properly. We did a video on staking and using limb spreaders. Every single fig tree here for the most part, I have already evaluated the form. What I will do is when I take everything out of here, bring it back to the house and set up the irrigation for just for its permanent home this season, I will evaluate every single tree and I will make any significant or small adjustment that needs to be made to the form of these fig trees. And that means basically just opening up the center of the tree, allowing the figs to grow more of an, on an angle, and that's gonna give me the best fruit set possible. However, we've already made a number of adjustments. We already got basically the fruit set that we want, um, but if there is any spots on the trees, that's what we're kind of looking at today. But I really wanna show you guys the fruit set and the results of this particular environment. If you guys love the videos I've been creating, you want to stay in tune with the journey that we've been having so far this growing season, hit that subscribe button for me right now. Hit that like button for me right now. It really helps out the videos that I put out and that algorithm here on YouTube. And then also check out my blog, figboss.com. The figs in general, like I said, are insanely healthy, although we do have a couple trees that kind of no matter what you do, you have to continually rejuvenation prune them and maybe even plant them in the ground. Those trees just inevitably are infected with the fig mosaic virus to a higher degree. And that rejuvenation process over time does indeed make them healthy. And here's a great example of that. We'll kind of skip over the fruit set here for just a minute. But here's a salsa tree that I have. This is an interesting variety that comes from Italy that I'm quite excited for actually. Um, and uh, what I'm noticing here is that there's a really healthy shoot that came up from the base here. And this is what we could call a sucker. And it, so it grew really vigorously and very healthy. Whereas this shoot here to the right actually has a little bit of growth that is kind of infected with that virus. And so what you wanna do, and inevitably I'm gonna cut out this entire system of branches. It does, of course, it's producing Brava here. The main crop fruits, although are not formed, you can see the double dots right there. That is the beginning stages of the formation there of the fig trees, of the figs, excuse me. But this virus is becoming, or it is really an issue for all figs. Uh, it's pretty much unavoidable, but if we plant them in the ground and we do rejuvenation pruning and we selectively choose the right branch, like this one here, is the same exact tree, but look how healthy this is. The leaf pattern is even very different. Um, and in fact, here's another weird thing. The, this part of the tree is fruiting at an earlier date than the other part of the tree. Isn't that interesting? So look at the beginnings there, the very small figs that we just looked at. The camera doesn't really want to focus, but on the other side of the tree, I promise you, there really isn't any figs I, to my sighting here that are at that same level of development. Um, and so for that reason, it's, it's a great idea. Obviously, that's just another reason to rejuvenate your prune, uh, rejuvenation prune, excuse me, your fig trees to make them more healthy. Um, inevitably, 
If I have an a unhealthy tree, this is just what I do every single year until it does become healthy. And planting them in the ground and then continually pruning them year after year, that pretty much solves that issue almost 100% for the majority of the figs. Um, and it's really, in my mind, the best way to deal with this. This is a tree here called DN Amaros that is quite young. And uh, you can see it was a healthy stem, healthy whip that grew last year. We put it into this like two or three gallon size pot here. And this was from a one gallon. I have a lot of hope for this particular variety and we're growing a number of these, these particular figs uh, of DN Amaros for that reason. But because this is so uh, young and you could see from this main whip that we had, we have four scaffolds that have formed and they're just quite vigorous. What we also didn't do is we didn't actually do any limb spreading or staking on this tree. I was waiting a little bit to see if these limbs would become a bit longer and that way I could stake them and open this up more. But this has to get opened up. See how I'm just kind of spreading these scaffolds here apart? They have to be permanently pushed apart to form a really nice form on this tree. The other problem and why this isn't fruiting is not just due to that lack of light because we didn't do any limb bending, we didn't do any staking, but also because the tree is young and the young trees have this hormonal imbalance where they love to grow and they're in this mode of hormones that encourages them to grow and discourages them to fruit. So right now we have to let this thing do its, really do its thing, this tree, and eventually it will slow down its growth and will produce figs probably next year if I can get this situated at home and uh, maybe do a little bit of staking now, I might get lucky. But for the most part, I imagine this tree is gonna be in that hormonal situation. So those are the two types of figs, two situations typically that uh, I will see here in this greenhouse. By the way, there's a lot behind me um, that uh, are not fruiting. And those are the reasons why they're not fruiting. The rest of them are fruiting because we got everything right, right? There's no hormonal imbalance. The, the light is perfect on them. We've been watering them well and keeping them cool in here because they can get too hot in this environment. And they're also rather healthy trees. Uh, this one here in particular has been interesting, Unknown Mitica. I really love the form on this. And you can see another similar fig to White Triana, one of my favorites. I'm hoping this one will really pan out well in terms of flavor. It's got nice fruit set here along pretty much all of the branches. And this is a beautiful form here that was set up, comes up and branches out in multiple directions on a nice angle. And all these branches here get that light that, uh, that we need. One of the branches at the top, this is an interesting little teaching lesson here. This branch, the scaffold comes up. And what I did was as this started to leaf out, this was the continuation bud here of the apical bud. What I did was I pinched it because I want this to stop growing to allow these branches down here to get some dominance and to actually get a size that, uh, that kind of makes sense for the inevitable form of the tree. If I have one branch that just has all the dominance, it's kind of growing as more of like a central leader rather than that rounded crown. Same thing here with this, this tree. This is a young tree as well that grew pretty much as a single stem whip last year. Continuation right here of the apical bud. We pinched it at the top. Uh, it may or may not fruit. Um, it may have this hormonal problem. I may see a fruit bud down there. I'm not sure, but what I am seeing actually right down here is good fruit set. These uh, main crop buds are forming on this lower branch. And then, so what's happening now that I've pinched the top this is stopping this growth and allowing some of the other branches to potentially gain some dominance and allow the scaffold formation that it desperately needs for the remainder of its life. Um, what else do we got in here? This is a type of Celeste, I believe. This one is St. Margarita. Got this one from John at uh, Figs for Fun. Um, and so you can actually see the main crop forming there. Uh, it takes a while actually for the main crop figs to form on Celeste, oddly enough. And I do have a black Celeste, a couple black Celestes I have in containers in here. 
we managed to propagate them really well. I'm really happy about that. And we should have a lot more material to, to share with people going forward um, because we have a number of them in the ground as well. I'm looking here for this black Celeste. Here we go, here's one right here. And so although Celeste typically forms the figs a bit later than other varieties, um, and you can see there's the beginning of a small fig there, they do ripen rather quickly. So even though uh, you might have, like I said, this slower fig formation, the, the figs actually do ripen very quickly once they do form. And so you're looking at probably on this black Celeste and the other Celestes, I have about four or five, maybe six in here, I think, of different types. Yeah, we've got about six, I think. And um, they will fruit probably in the next 60 days. So if today is uh, May 10th, I think it is, May 9th. So um, that just to me is giving me that great indication that May 9th, fast forward 60 days, that's two months. So we're looking at probably July 9th to see fruit on this tree. And that's the beauty of this greenhouse and this environment. Um, all this heat, all this extra heat units uh, gets them to grow at the right rate earlier in the season and allows them to set these fruit buds. Now it is May 9th, as I said, and they are setting all over the tree, these trees here. And so that's really nice um, because what we've been able to do with all of these, here's another one up here, Ponte Tresa. This tree looks fantastic. Um, I really like the form, how that one turned out. But what's nice is that they have basically, because we've got the heat dialed in almost perfect, it was a little too hot in here in the beginning, actually. Parts of April were really warm. But if you can ease into that heat, it allows them to grow a lot more. Once they grow like this black Celeste here that we're looking at, this tree next to it is really not that healthy. This is a fig I got uh, from a, actually a different YouTuber. And uh, this fig is just not doing too hot, but that's not their fault. It's just the fact that the tree isn't healthy. But this one here, this black Celeste is a perfect example of a fig that grew a lot because it was a bit cooler in here and then was allowed, now that the heat has kicked up a little bit, forced the tree to actually set those fruit buds. We need a different amount of heat units to set the fruit buds and a different amount of heat units to ripen the fruits once they've already been set. And so this black Celeste, again, perfect example of a tree that was allowed to grow. It was a single stem whip. It actually wasn't in this hormonal imbalance like some of the other trees, one of the other trees we looked at, that Dean Amaros. Um, this one here got the right hormonal balance, was pretty much set up right, had the perfect amount of heat units, and was allowed to set a good amount of fruits while also continuing to grow. Sometimes, and this is what my, the point I'm trying to make is that the trees, this is actually the perfect example, is the tree right next to it, the tree I got from the other YouTuber, is that it is, although unhealthy, but it, it was in here at an earlier date than the others, I believe. And so what happened was it got too hot in here too soon, I was not careful enough, and so the figs didn't grow a whole lot before they actually set the fruit buds. And so now that there's that excess of heat earlier, they set the fruits earlier, they can't really produce enough leaves to support the fruits that have already set on the tree while also continuing to grow. And so that's the problem. You don't wanna blast the heat too soon because you get fruits too soon and then you ruin the growth and you ruin the production of your trees sometimes. What I think I'll do is actually remove a couple of these fruits. Um, I'm going to take off the very, very small fruit buds here as they are forming on uh, a few of the a few of the buds here. Take off about three. And then on this branch here, this has got one or two forming there. I won't mess with that. And then we'll take off one down here. So we'll take off four fruits. That's enough hopefully, to allow the fruits that have already set on this, on this tree to develop and actually ripen properly while it continues to grow. Um, I want this tree to grow. I don't really want it to fruit. I only want to see a couple fruits to identify whatever this fig is. It's an, un, it's an unknown to then also gather some information about this variety and then go from there. Do I want to keep it? Do I want to get rid of it? 
that's a lot of the questions there that we're asking. And so that's kind of a little bit of a brief rundown here, guys, of what's going on in this greenhouse. Um, we could obviously go through every single tree and show you guys all the fruit set, but you got to take my word for it. We just struck gold. We did everything right for the most part. There was a little bit of a hiccup here and there, but all these figs, this is a Hivernenka tree here. Really, really nice. This here is a De La Roca, another fig that's got nice fruit set. And these are late figs. Hivernenka, De La Roca, they're late to ripen, yet they have really nice fruit set. This is a Col de Dame gigantina up here pinched off the top of that just to get this to branch out a little bit more um, that's my focus same thing with the top pinch the top but the tree is already forming those fruit buds um, and pretty soon like i said but it depends on the tree every tree is a little different this is 17 oroso forming figs there it looks a bit like Vila de bardot but very different but that's the thing right you get the the fruit buds to set every fig is a little bit different than the other some take that 65 days, like I mentioned, like with Black Celeste, but the others can take 90, uh, assuming you have good heat, uh, heat units going forward. Um, we're looking at cold anoms probably by August. Um, so early August, which is fantastic. That's a dream. Um, and that's really what you want out of the cold anoms and these late figs. I want them to ripen in August because by the time September comes around and September 15th comes around, we're in the fall. Every fig needs about 45, 30 to 45 days, maybe even 60 days to ripen their full crop. And so if I'm getting them by early August, that means 30 to 45 days later puts me at around September 15th when the weather starts to get nasty. So we did everything right. It's perfect. I'm so happy. Um, and even if I were to get rid of all these trees, guys, I'm telling you, the, it, the season would still be the best ever because of all the in-ground figs I have this year. Um, so stay tuned for more videos. As these ripen, we will talk all about the different varieties, talk about some of the special figs that we've come across this year, and we'll see you guys for the next one. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button for me, and check out the blog, figboss.com. We'll catch you guys for the next video. Take care.